Howdy, y'all. Today, we're going to talk about circuit breaker errors. So this is when your cluster can respond client-side with a circuit breaking exception, aka data too large. So circuit breakers help protect your cluster, um, both in individual categories and also on a parent level, uh, in order to protect the heap from running out of space and exiting the service. So instead of sacrificing the entire service, it just sacrifices whatever process that is attempting. This frequently comes up either in searching and or ingesting um, related to rejected requests. So this can come up under thread pool, particularly circuit breakers and or ex indexing pressure. Uh, when you encounter one of these three, potentially you can encounter all three. Today, we're gonna focus in particular on circuit breaker errors. So when circuit breaker errors occur, again, um, they're literally gonna say something like data too large. Uh, we're going to see the node stats breaker number tripped uh, incrementing over time. So what we want to see today is we want to see that incrementing. Uh, and then once we see it incrementing, uh, that would tell us that there's something to review and to follow those guides on how to resolve it. So for today's purposes, um, I spun up a cluster that's drastically undersized. Um, so for production clusters with production volume, uh, Elastic recommends at least four gigabytes of RAM uh, for those master nodes. What I've spun up today um, is as small as I could go. Uh, so it's one gigabyte um, on both of the hot slash master nodes. Uh, you'll notice that by default, they're both sitting at about 60% heap. So those, again, like for dev would be fine, but for production are definitely undersized. Uh, and so what I did is, so that's two hot nodes, created an ILM, created a template. So it's going to be rolling over into frozen. And then I bootstrapped that index. So I'm going to be ingesting into Hogwarts um, to also add in a little more pressure. I've uh, overrode ILM to be pulling every one minute. So with that in mind, um, I'm just going to use an Elasticsearch Python script. It's just going to be ingesting. It's going to be retrying. It's going to set that timeout extremely high. Um, using some free Harry Potter data on the internet, it's going to be creating some bulk requests. Uh, those bulk requests are going to be using the Python lorem library. That's just to make sure that the bulk request size is really large, uh, because again, fake data. So it's going to be doing that bulk ingest. Um, again, here we're saying it's a bulk size of 50. 50 would normally be undersized, but our lorem text is pretty sizable. Uh, so we should be able to get that cluster to start feeling pain really fast. Um, so when we induce the pain, um, what we're going to be expecting uh, is under the performance tab. Uh, and if we scroll down, we're going to be seeing this memory pressure. You've seen I've spiked it a couple of times above that 75% line. 75% is where a uh, elastic cloud gives you a warning. Uh, so this bar right here will turn to red, but technically Elasticsearch doesn't take any action. Um, Elasticsearch takes action uh, as we get closer towards that 85%. So here as well, you see I've spiked it a couple of times right here. I induced some circuit breakers for myself. So that same view, uh, if you had Elasticsearch uh, monitoring enabled um, or in Elastic Cloud, like I set up logs and metrics, um, that data would show under, so like either the master node under JVM heap, here you see like based on the bucket size that I have, um, I'm not seeing those, uh, even though obviously I just saw them on the performance tab. I'm gonna see them on one or the other. Here you see I spiked CPU, so that was probably directly lining up um, to when I saw that. I can obviously zoom in and zoom out in order to get this to show that same thing as well. So uh, what we're going to do, uh, here you see where I, caused the circuit breakers earlier. I'm just going to run this task in parallel multiple times uh, so that I can induce some heavy pressure. And then we're going to start looking for the node stats breakers to be incrementing. So just confirming, um, node stats increments since node uptime. So if my nodes uh, restart because they out of memory, um, those stats will reset. But otherwise, I needed to know what the figure was at before and then wait some interval period. And then now I can go pull it again. And here we see, oh, I already induced circuit breakers somewhere. <laughs> cool, so we induced uh, three circuit breakers. Um, let's go restart. 
Yeah, so we got a circuit breaker, go team. Um, so again, my root cause is very obvious. Your root cause may be less obvious. Like I'd severely undersize those nodes for what I'm trying to do uh, with them. Um, so again, tripped count incremented a little bit. Here we can also see if we pull cat nodes, um, our heat percent, it looks like our heat percents are pretty high. Again, noting heat percent is instantaneous. Um, so you potentially want to rely on the memory pressure instead. Um, that is what Elastic Cloud tells you. It tells you memory pressure. If you're not familiar with memory pressure, sorry, wrong page. Um, memory pressure, as the UI calculates it, is just from node stats. Uh, you're just doing this equation of um, that old used bytes divided by total bytes. So that's how you calculate memory pressure. Uh, so we have induced a couple of them. I'm expecting this chart to update and tell us that we're having more. Oh, just barely. Ah, cool. Got to go restart all of those failing ones then. Okay, so we're getting back in our problem. Awesome. Okay, so as long as I keep restarting those, we'll actually have high heap, uh, which will induce the high memory pressure, which directly correlates to the circuit breakers, although it's not fully guaranteed. So here we see, yeah, we're slowly incrementing. I love it. Um, okay. In, in the logs, we can definitely see we're circuit breaking a lot. So um, if following uh, the Elastic Cloud Guide, you had set up logs and metrics, um, what we're going to do today is we're just going to have used that data view for clouds and met, uh, logs and monitoring um, for the Elastic Cloud logs so that we can use Discover. So here we can see the circuit breakers I tripped before. Um, you'll notice I'm doing a leucine search, circuit breaking exception, data too large, or circuit breaking exception underscore. And then I'm also adding a little note for in case I do trigger an out of memory just so that I am forewarned. Um, here, You'll see circuit breaking exception is for the Elasticsearch logs. Circuit underscore breaking underscore exception is for the Kibana logs. So it just depends. Client side has the underscore and Elasticsearch side, I think it's called camel case. Nobody quote me. I never remember what those are called. Uh, just going to keep my problem continual so that we can see more things. OK, cool. So we got a sizable little chunk of circuit breakers right there. Awesome. OK. so. In the logs, um, this is usually how most people end up uh, noticing the issue. Here we can see circuit breakers can happen on various things, even though we know our root cause is bulk ingest. So here we see that there was a search phase exception. Um, if we click into this doc, here we see on our error that it's having a circuit breaker exception related to reducing aggregations. Um, and then it looks like it's Kibana's literally reporting concerns with Elasticsearch. Uh, anytime you see circuit breaking errors, uh, even if it's Kibana, right, circuit breakers are on the Elasticsearch level. So we would potentially go look for other ones. Um, here we see HTTP requests. If we circle back to that original doc, it tells us HTTP are for in-flight requests. So this should directly correlate to tasks happening on our cluster, which is why I keep re-kicking off those tasks because uh, I didn't make the script resilient to bypassing errors just so that I could keep seeing when they do happen. So we know this relates to tasks currently hitting our cluster. Um, very frequently, that's going to be some form of ingest, some form of search. Technically, could be something else. Um, if you try way too hard, you potentially could just do it with like a head of the uh, default endpoint. Um, but at this point, we know circuit breakers are occurring. Um, we, if we didn't know that our nodes were severely undersized, um, would be coming to our cluster and saying like, hey, like what's going on? Um, how are my cat nodes doing? Uh, pulling cat nodes, we'd say, hey, my heap is a little high. Let's go look at cat tasks. My cat tasks are pretty empty. So. Uh, speaking from experience, obviously not from what I'm currently demonstrating. Um, if we were kicking off a production level volume, circuit breakers, four gigabytes or more, usually you'd see tasks kind of piled up here, um, usually for multiple minutes. And or if we looked at cat thread pool, 
um, we would be usually expecting to see uh, either search or writes having some form of active uh, or queue. So again, minor crazy way small. Uh, so from the hardware side, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to show all y'all that. Uh, but this is how we see circuit breakers. And then circling back to that doc, it ends up telling us like, if you see this happening, like go follow the high JVM memory pressure doc, uh, which should directly correlate to resolving. If high memory pressure is being caused by high CPU, if you see those in tandem, high CPU usage also has information on how to troubleshoot. And then anything after that, like is potential things that you can use to clear and reset just so that you at least uh, alleviate symptoms while you investigate. So that's it. We induce circuit breakers. Go team. I love it. Awesome. Thanks all for hanging out. Bye.